Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with Warp Fire Minis. In today's challenge game, we're going up against Ogre Maw Tribes. So going into Ogre Maw Tribes, this list, he's bringing a bunch of the stone horns and it's called the monster truck list. And the things you gotta watch out for is those stone horns, they all count as 10 on an objective. And then they're all just super fast. They hit super hard and they're super hard to take down because all of them have that five up ward. And especially the Frost Lord, because he's got a three up save. He'll finest hour, mystic shield, all out defense, like, and he's minus one to wound for their mount trait. So it turns that Frost Lord into a situation where you most of the time just can't reliably kill him. So we'll try and focus on the other stone horns first, try and set up a bunch of clan rats on the objectives. We'll see how it pans out. All right, first up, the mission we got today was Power Flux. And so there's gonna be two active objectives. You score bonus points for having a locus unit on the active objective and a bonus point if you kill an enemy wizard. Then just to run you through his list, it's mostly stone horns, but there are two packs of two Mornfang, boom and boom. A Butcher, which is gonna be his only locus for the game. He has a Frost Lord on stone horn, a Husk Guard on stone horn, and then two just stone horn beast riders out there on the sides. This is what deployment looked like. And after we deployed, he looked at it and decided to give me the first turn. Typically with the Stonehorn style of list, they want to go second. They want to double you and just end the game right away. So that's his hope here, but we'll just jump into it. Skaven top of one. All right, so Skaven top of one battle tactic. We're going to go magical dominance. Uh, he was a one or two drop army. So I got to see where he went, deploy my wizards where I wanted them to be. Um, we've got Blue guy over here where I can skitter leap screech. We got the purple guy ready for a death frenzy. So we just start going for it. We get a bless off on the clan rats. We do a heal. Just again, there's nothing to heal. Just fishing for the great plagues. And over here we befoul this objective. It's not going to do anything this turn because he activated these two objectives. Then into the actual spell casting part of it. I end up skitter leaping screech over here. And it was a situation where I could have him wholly within six, within 13 of the Mourn Fang, outside of 30 of the Butcher. And so I could cast this without being an unbind range just to try and fish for a dreaded 13th. We go for it and we roll two ones, miscast, we take three mortal wounds to ourselves. Sweet. So now back down here, since Screech would have liked to have Mystic Shielded himself, but with the miscast, he can't cast any more spells. So we just do a Mystic Shield over here onto this furnace. We go for the Death Frenzy on the Hell Pit, and we don't get it. And then that wraps up the hero phase into movement. So then with him activating these two objectives, in my movement phase, there is no chance I go up there and take that one from him. So I'm just going to kind of double down, move a bunch of guys onto this objective. So we'll start off with this squad of clan rats right here. We'll run and get some more bodies on. Then we'll run this Grace here up here just to get the bodyguard unit. And that'll let us get our bonus point for sure. Hell Pit scoots over, just touch the objective. These clan rats run and get up on the... The objective as well. Little Plague Priest runs over. Furnace touches over just to touch the objective. Get within 13 of our clan rats. The Blue Gray Seer runs over here, just get next to the bodyguard. Scabic does the same. And then we just fan out Scabic's guys, just making a little screen. The Stone Horns, they can charge in and then do a 3d6 move. So just you want to try and leave like where there's not an, a big empty space where they can just boom land in and get you. Um, in this situation, he could go all the way back here and get one, but at least here he can't get both. Then end of movement phase, we go and we teleport Screech back through the knot hole, pop him down here. So we've, we have just refortified this objective the best we can. And then for deep strike stuff, the PCBs, like there's a world where I send in the gutter runners and the PCBs. We try and kill that stone horn, but then he's going to collapse on me, kill all of it. Then if he gets the double, just run over me. But there is a play specifically for this mission because the locust units get you that extra bonus point. I measured it out and there was room here for me to set my gutter runners up outside of nine of that butcher. And it's not guaranteed that the gutter runners do this, but on average they do. And if I can kill the butcher, I'm going to score a bonus point for the round and it will prevent him from scoring bonus points every round for the rest of the game. So... It's a little bit of a risk, but we're making the play. We're going for it. So first up, we drop the drill right in the middle. And this is going to prevent the stone horns from being able to move past him because their base is so big and they can't move within three. And then we boom, drop down the gutter runners. And then boom, the gutter runners come down. We're going to shoot into the butcher. And then we'll see, like, if I don't kill him, we'll try and hit the charge. But we go to the shooting phase. 
I all out attack. So we're going to be threes and fours, six to hit, do one mortal wound. We shoot all the attacks and we end up doing like 10 damage to the butcher, which kills him. And so that's a, just a huge swing right out the gate. I don't have enough bodies on to take this objective because the husk guard counts as 10. But now we go to the charge phase. I'm going to roll the dice for the gutters just to see what I get. And I get a 10. And so now I have the option. I could charge this husk guard. But realistically, the gutters are going to do maybe 8 damage to him on a good day. Because he'll be able to all out defense. He'll be able to stop and kill a couple of them. And so if I charge him, I am for sure going to die. Like he'll do 10 damage and it's not going to be any kind of problem for him. So... I look at it and I could charge the Mournfang instead. And then I could maybe kill a Mournfang or two if I spike. And then they're not going to kill the whole squad back. And so that's what I decided to go with. And so boom, out of nowhere, there's a piece of terrain that was right there. I just forgot to put it on the board. Um, but the gutter runners, we charge into the Mournfang like this. And it's important because I pile in. I stay outside of three of the Huskard. But with the position of these gutter runners now... It's going to make it where his base can't pass through without getting within three of my gutter runners. Which is going to make this guy either have to charge them or he's going to have to walk around this way and lose a bunch of movement. So that was the other benefit of deciding to go into the Mornfangs here. But we go ahead and we fight. I don't all out attack again because I want to save a command point for bravery. But we end up attacking and we kill one Mornfang. He fights back and spikes and kills eight of my gutter runners. But then I just auto-pass the bravery and stay there. So that's going to be it for the round. I score one. One for having a locust on it. Plus one for killing a wizard. And then boom for my battle tactics. So five points. So now we're going over into Ogre's bottom one. We start off for his battle tactic. He's looking through and he doesn't have an excellent one. So he's going to go for magical dominance. I have the plague furnace within 30 of that frost lord. And so he does that, does his heroic action. I do the heroic action to get an unbind. We roll for primal dice, and we've got the same amount of primal dice. Then his Huskar does a prayer. He does the hailstorm, and it ends up killing the two gutter runners, which, unfortunate, like it would have been cool to be able to move block him there, but the prayer he got it off. You get all you can do is try your best. Then for his battle tactic, the spell he goes for is Mystic Shield. He rolls it, uses all of his primal dice, and gets up to a 17. I roll it, and I start out with just a 5, a 4, and a 1. So even if I had my two primal dice I have, I, I just can't get there. And so, boom, he gets his battle tactic. From there, we just jump into movement. The Mornfang run down. Regular stone horn moves up behind him. The single Mornfang moves over here outside the three of the drill. And then the husk guard moves up here behind him. And then this stone horn runs up here to this objective. Last but not least, the frost lord moves. And so again, this was an instance where I just stayed farther back than he wanted me to. Typically, they like it if you like push up onto these two objectives and they just come crashing in, hit you, double, and just end the game. But staying back made it to where turn one, he's not going to have like a really big impact here. The only thing he ends up doing is charging this Mornfang in and killing the drill. And then with his blood vultures and stuff, he ends up killing two Escavix guys over here and a couple clan rats. But the clan rats come back from the Plague Furnace, auto-passing the Bravery, and then getting D3 back. But that ends up being the turn. He's only going to score three, because he's got the one active objective in his battle tactic. So that's just showing, already, boom, I'm up five to three from killing the wizard, and him not being able to score that bonus point is going to start to add up pretty fast. So we roll off for priority, and I win the priority roll. And looking at it, like... I don't want him to double me and just crush me. And looking at the board now, like he'll, he'll be able to charge some stone horns into me and it's going to hurt. But this hurt is not going to be as bad as the potential double would be. So I've got that little bit of a points lead. I'll see if I can hold on to this objective. We give him the turn. So we go into top of two ogres. He's looking at the board and he's feeling the same exact way I am. Uh, if he crashes into me and then I double turn him back, it's going to be a devastating loss for him too. And so he ends up deciding to go for a battle tactic called Savor the Taste, which is where all the ogre units are hungry, which means that they're not in combat. And so he ends up just taking a defensive position instead of just full sending everybody in. So we'll just go into his hero phase. He's got the Frostlord has an arcane tome, tries to cast a mystic shield and fails. 
The Husk Guard goes for a prayer and fails the prayer as well. Heroic action, I heal Screech 1. And then we go to the movement phase, and he decides to just stay exactly where he's at, and he ends his turn. So he's going to get one for the active objective, two for the battle tactic, three. And again, he just didn't want to send everything in. Like, right now it's still going to be for me to go out and hit him. I'm going to have to reach out and expand out and give him some opportunities. So he's just trying to play safe there, and we'll see how that pans out. All right, so we go over to Skaven, bottom at two. My battle tactic this round is going to be led into the Maelstrom. I'm going to charge a hero and a battle line unit. He kept the Mornfang outside of 13 of Screech, so there's not going to be any dreaded 13th. Heroic action, I heal Screech up. He heals his two. We get a Mystic Shield on Screech. We get a Bless onto the Clan Rats. And we get our Death Frenzy off onto the Hell Pit. And from there, we'll just jump into movement. These Clan Rats here just move up six. Then we move the Plague Furnace up over this way. Get the Plague Priest out of the way. And we send Screech up here, just outside of three of the Mornfang. He goes for a redeploy and gets a two. These clan rats just kind of regroup onto this objective. The help it just stays over here next to the knot hole. And then we run the Grace here just to get next to his bodyguard guys. Scabic over here. And again, just a little screen with these guys. From there, we're going second now, so we got our opportunity for a double turn. So we're going to go ahead and send in the PCBs. And also at the end of the movement, we send the help hit over here. Also outside of nine of that stone horn. So we go to the charge phase and I start with the furnace. And it's one like if he makes it in cool, if he doesn't cool, we roll the charge, we get a six, we reroll it, we get an eight. So the claw steps charge, we're not making it in with that. But I do have an eight I can use for everybody. It doesn't quite get him in, but it will let me get in these clan rats. And so we send them way over here just within a half inch of these guys for a battle tactic. Screech will be able to make it in. Then we roll for the PCBs and we get the nine. They make it two. Then we roll for the help hit and boom, we get another nine. Help hits in two. So we go for monstrous rampages. The help hit roars into the stone horn, gets it, which is excellent. We stop into the Mornfang, do a couple damage, and we go to combat. The PCBs, they do the most damage out of everything I have, so we fight with them first. So the PCBs, they pile in, stay outside of three of this husk card on stone horn. We fight into the stone horn, and since he can't all out defense, we do something like 40 damage. I guess rolls five up awards, but he is dead. He fights with the Mornfang, does a couple damage to Screech. I go ahead and fight with Screech and kill the Mornfang. Then he piles in over here. I do an all out defense, but he still ends up killing like 10 of the clan rats, which is okay. We've got the furnace and range for the bravery thing. So this we have guaranteed we scored our battle tactic. That's why we sent them in. Then lastly, the help it he charged so he can pile in three. He just moves three inches to get closer to those guys. And that's the turn. We're going to score one, plus that bonus point, plus two for our battle tactic, so four points. We roll for priority going into three, and I win the priority roll. And you better believe it, we're taking the double. So we'll jump into Skaven, top of three. Heroic action, Screech heals off the wounds. Battle tactic, we're going for the three prayer tactic. We got all three of our priests alive. We got the reroll prayers earlier. So that's going to be an easy one. And then Screech for his stance this turn, he's going into minus one to hit stance just to be able to take the hit back a little bit better. And two at the end of the last battle shock, I got two clan rats back in the squad. So then we go into regular hero phase. Screech, he goes for the dread 13th. We don't get it off. We get a mystic shield on him. Over here, prayer wise, we go for a bless onto the clan rats. We get it. We go for a pestilence, pestilence, and we do two mortal wounds to the Mornfang. And then last one, Skabic, he goes for a smite. The Huskard is a priest, and so might as well just do a couple damage to him. Typically, Spite does one damage, but if you roll a six or higher, then it does D3. And so since I get the bonuses for the two priests, I rolled a four, but that makes it a six. So we do two mortal wounds to the Huskard. That also means battle tactic complete. We got our three prayers. And then from there, we'll just go straight into movement. On this side, the PCBs and the help hit are exactly where they need to be. And even Screech, he's pretty close. So we're going to start on this side. We just go ahead and retreat these clan rats out. No sense in letting them die. Then we move the Plague Furnace up to be outside of three of these guys. When I do that, he redeploys the Mornfang. I think he gets a four or five. Down here, we're looking pretty good as far as tying stuff up. So I just kind of, we hang out on the objective, fan out these clan rats a little bit, and just make sure we got our heroes in range of like the gnaw hole, get the bonus, and then still in range of their bodyguard units. And then now since he did redeploy these Mornfang, he can't do it again, so we move up here outside of three of this Husk Guard, and it's time to charge. 
going into the charge phase, the first charge we make is with these clan rats here. And they have a banner in the unit so they can still retreat and charge. We roll the charge, we get an eight, and that's enough to get everybody in. First up, we're going to send the furnace down this way, staying outside of three. Then we go ahead and we charge in the PCBs first, and they're going to charge their eight to help it charges in. And then Screech does as well. And we're making sure we stay outside of three of that Frost Lord. We don't want anything to do with him. We go for our Monstrous Rampages. Uh, we go for a Roar with the Help Hit. We get it. And then we Titanic Duel with Screech. Then we go to combat. Again, the most damage in my list is going to be those PCBs. So we fight with them first. He tried to Roar them and failed. So they pile in, just staying outside of three of the Frost Lord. Which then lets me pile in the rest of my army. We just scoot the Help Hit a little bit closer to that objective. Screech again, just, he's already on the objective, he's good. Just staying outside of three. But we do go and pile in this Plague Furnace. And we scoot him up to be just within three of this Stone Horn. And it's also going to keep me within three of my Clan Rats here, so that I'm going to get the bonus for the minus one to hit and minus one to wound. And the theory here is just the Plague Furnace, he's really tanky. So with the minus one to hit, minus one to wound, we should be able to just sit there and tank and hot tie up both of those units. If we can kill this one this turn, he's only going to have essentially those three units left. If those two are tied up, it's only one. It's going to be hard for him to score a bunch of points with one unit. But then we go for combat. The PCBs, they swing in, and boom, they just drop the Husk Guard. Next combat, he piles in with his Stonehorn. And with the minus one to hit, minus one to wound, he swings in and does zero damage to the Plague Furnace, which that's what we were hoping for. That's the dream. Goes to my combat. And here's where I made a mistake. The help it had charged, so he's still eligible to pile in three. And not thinking, and just sometimes when things are going well, you just start making mistakes. And so I went ahead and I piled him in three to touch this objective because I was excited about it. When I should have fought with this Plague Furnace into these Mournfang, and I likely would have just killed them and not taken any damage. But made a mistake, did that, so now boom, Mournfang come in. And... In my heart, I'm not really sweating it. Like the minus one to hit, minus one to wound. He shouldn't do much damage to me here. But the Morphine, they just go absolutely berserk. He's rolling fives constantly and they end up doing nine damage to the Plague Furnace. And that's just a note to yourself, like even when things are going well or if they're going bad, like you just gotta stay sharp, stay on top of it. Like that's nine damage I just shouldn't have taken, but here we are. So then the wounded Furnace, he ends up fighting back into the Morphine. And we do pretty well too, and we end up killing both Mornfang. Just the big bulk of mortal wounds it does, that helps out. And then we'll go to scoring. I hold the active. I've got my wizard on the active. I hold his active now between the PCBs and the two monsters. And I got my battle tactic for five points, so we're building that lead. And that's just that every turn getting this bonus point for the wizard, just a really big deal. We're gonna scoot over to Ogre's bottom of three. Ogres, for their battle tactic this time, they've got one where they all have to be eating at the start of the combat phase, which just means they have to be in combat really easy. Um, he goes to cast a Mystic Shield. I unbind it. And then for my heroic action, I find a Tower of the Furnace. He's got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Stonehorn one more time. So we're just going to try and hold on there. Then we'll go to movement. The Stonehorn, he's looking at this, and that's a bad time. Like, he can kill one of those things, but then the other two just clap him back. So he ends up full sending the stone horn down this way. This one he just leaves in combat. It's his battle tactic. Hits the charge. He puts the mortal wound impacts into Skabix's crew here and kills them. His monstrous rampage, he flies around and does some damage to all these guys, which was a cool move. The gray seers end up shrugging some of their wounds into the clan rats. Then into the combat phase itself. Then this stone horn here goes for the roar onto the furnace and fails. Combat wise, he starts out with this stone horn, because again, clan rats, they're just not a threat. Attacks in. I all out defense. Between all out defense, finest hour, minus one to hit, minus one to wound. The stone horn again does zero damage. My turn, I end up retreating this plague priest out. Then his turn, he piles in this way. Get outside of three of these guys because he doesn't want to be stuck in combat. Frost Lord fights in and just blows up all these clan rats. Goes back to me. I fight into this stone horn. I think we do six damage to him. And then the Plague Priest here, I end up piling into this stone horn. And we do, I think, zero damage. <laughs> but we're just leaving him in to try and score a flea flea maybe the next turn between the furnace and him. 
or just preventing him from charging is good, so we left the Plague Priest in combat. We go to scoring, he does take this objective away from me for one, then he scores his battle tactic for another two, so three points. We roll priority going into turn four, I win the priority, I take the turn, and long story short here, I do flee flee from my battle tactic, just retreat these two guys out, but then we got a dreaded 13th off onto this stone horn for like another five damage, so he's only got a few left. Between Screech and the PCBs and the Help It, like, we walk over here, we kill this stone horn. Then with our little foot heroes down here, we just retreat out for the battle tactic. Keep a Grace here on to score the bonus point. Gnaw haul one way away. And this guy just runs off here as far as he can go, just trying to spread out. Then these clan rats here, they can just run onto this objective so that we'll hold it for the turn and score max. So then just between that, Screech and everybody else going up here and killing this guy. I end up scoring max, which is five points. Goes over to his turn, and we both look at the board. He's got the one unit left, and his grand strategy is to have more units in my territory than I have in my own territory. And just, I have so many units, he's going to fail his grand strategy. So even if he stops my grand strategy, the, the point differential at this point is just too big for him to come back. And we call that a game. And that's it, another win for the Rats. And in this one, the things that kind of went right for me was just that turn one play, putting the gutter runners in to go after that butcher. And it's one that it's not going to happen for me every single game I go for it, but it's going to happen more often than not. So I've got to make that play. And so if he had those stone horns just out front of the butcher, he could have set it up to where the gutter runners didn't have room to deep strike in and shoot him. And that would have changed the game a lot where I would have had to play a little bit differently. Just with that early lead, you can play a little bit safer. And that let me just that turn one stay all the way back to where I didn't have to even try to engage with him. And then another thing my opponent could have done a little bit differently was turn one, he got to choose which objectives to activate. So if he had activated those two side objectives, it would have forced me to push up onto them. And maybe I could have scored two bonus points with my two locust units on it, which again would have gave me that early lead. But at least if you force me up it's going to put me in a position where those stone horns, they're so fast. Then they could push in that turn one, hit stuff, and then you're going for priority. I ended up winning the priority roll, so maybe it doesn't, doesn't change the game in a huge way. But if he had won the priority roll into two, just being able to hit me turn one, then finish me off turn two. For a stone horn monster truck kind of list, that's kind of the ideal. And then lastly, there was that big priority roll going into turn two. And that's one where we both wanted to win it, and we both wanted to give the turn to the other person. Just his turn won. Since I was able to stay back, he stayed back. And so since I won the priority roll, I could see that he's only going to get one or two stone horns in, so I can safely give him the turn. Where if he had won that priority roll instead, he would have given me the turn, and it would have made me push out and kind of extend myself early. Then he would be hoping for that double turn going two into three just to wham bam me. But that's it for this week's Battle Report. We got Slanesh coming up next week. And then always, if you ever need any models, check us out at warpfireminis.com. Thank you.